Well, this is not our final Sunday with the pews. That's next week. This is the Sunday that we are taking the time to reflect on how they have been a part of our life of faith here at St. Luke's. Now, before we talk about that, I want to address some of the different reactions I've heard to our plan to, our plan to remove the sanctuary. We're not going to remove the sanctuary. <laughs> Let's try that again. I want to address some of the different reactions I've heard to our plan to remove the pews from the sanctuary. There's been some sadness and grief, some excitement, but there's also been some confusion. Why is this such a big deal? It's just a bench, just wood. How different can chairs be? I don't get why we're making this a thing. I've heard this from a few people. I think our fact-seeking, certainty-seeking minds can sometimes dismiss how objects can hold presence, feeling, meaning, I remember when my former spouse and I were house hunting, we walked into a dozen different homes, some furnished, some not. None of them had people in them except for us and the realtor. And each house felt different. Sometimes we could feel a lightness, a joy. Sometimes a house just felt off. It wasn't the way they were built or the shape that they were in. Each place had its own energy, its own sense of its former inhabitants' presence that had been absorbed into the wooden floors and soaked into the walls. Babies' cries, <clears throat> arguments, birthday parties, illnesses, laughter. These pews have been in this space for nearly 70 years. They were here in the 80s and 90s when the parish needed two, ser two services to hold the fullness of this community. They were here through the struggles of the 2010s when the congregation dwindled to fewer than 20 and they weren't sure if they were going to keep the church going. They held the silence of our absence during the year of pandemic shutdown. Not to mention that some of us have never worshipped in a church without pews before. For some of us, pews are an integral act to the very part of worship that we love. Now this, like any attachment, can creep into a kind of idolatry. And we need to be careful of that. But that's not what today is about. Today is about telling the stories of what these pews have held for each of us. We tell stories because something matters to us. Something stirs us and we want others to feel the stirring too, or at least we want them to hold it with us. And today is about listening to those stories and hearing what matters to the others around you, even if they aren't the same things that matter to you. The sharing of and listening to stories is the foundation of community. And we tell stories in different ways. Take our scriptures this morning. Esther is historical fiction, a story about things that probably happened, maybe, but reimagined for a larger purpose. It was written to justify the Jewish holiday of Purim. Esther is often considered a comedy slapstick even. I know today's reading 
doesn't sound like it. <laughs> Especially since we're taught that the Bible is a very serious book. And that's how we're supposed to read it. But I like the idea of Esther being a comedy. And if you read the whole thing, it is so over the top, top and hyperbolic, you'll see what I'm saying. I mean, who here has never embellished a story to make it a little bit funnier? That's what Esther invites us to do. And if you're so moved, you're allowed to do that today. And all the Psalms are literally songs to sing, to take our joy or sorrow or struggle or accomplishment and to sing it. Because a story changes. It becomes a different experience when we sing it. We'll do a bit of that kind of storytelling today, too. James is a written letter. Someone's thoughts on what they thought Jesus was trying to teach his followers. I know a lot of us are a lot more comfortable putting our words into writing than saying them out loud. Like singing, writing, and reading rather than hearing changes the experience of a story. It invites pauses, reflection, slowness. Some of you have written thoughts today to share silently. And then there's Mark, one of the four Gospels. The same story told four different ways each emphasizing the parts of Jesus' life and ministry that each author found most important, that spoke to them because of who each of them uniquely were. It just goes to show that just because we're all seeing or reading or hearing the same thing doesn't mean that we're all experiencing it the same way. So you have lots of options for how you tell your story today. The questions we shared to get you thinking about your story are, what have you seen these pews hold in their time at St. Luke's? And how have these pews held you through moments of your life and your faith? Now, if you're ever in any kind of small group with me, you know I like to hold a group in covenant to create safe space, respectful space for everyone present to feel safe to participate. And one agreement we all make is to stand up and step back. To stand up means that if you feel shy or afraid, to gently challenge yourself to share, knowing you are held in covenant. Luckily, today, one of the options is writing your story down <laughs> rather than sharing it out loud. So there's a way for you to share without putting yourself out there in a way that might be uncomfortable or scary for you, especially in front of the whole church. It's a little easier in smaller groups. But I know a lot of you are very comfortable speaking in a group which is amazing, and I love. And we want to make sure that everyone's voice is heard without the service going on for hours. Because another agreement we have is honoring one another's time. So step back means to be selective about the story you tell and mindful of the time that you're speaking. If you have a lot of stories, and I imagine a few of you do, pick one and tell that, and then write the others down and share them at our altar. You also have the option not to share anything at all. That's okay, too. Maybe you're new to our community, so this feels really awkward. That's fair. Maybe you just don't have strong feelings about any of this. 
But what I do hope is that we all will listen for what is important to each person and that we hold each story with grace and care. After the storytelling, you'll be invited to bring whatever mementos or artifacts you've brought with you or any stories you wrote down and set them on our makeshift pew altar up here to remember what these pews have given to us and held for us these decades. If you don't have a story or a memento, there's a table up front and in the narthex with mementos that you can bring to the front and just set down, just to honor this time together. Whatever you have to say during this time, however you participate, this is our way of saying goodbye to these pews that have held us each in different ways and have held this church and its life of worship and community for so long. Amen.